Ellis Jones has been the general manager of Race Tire Manufacturing for Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company since July 2012. Prior to leading the Race Tire Manufacturing team, Ellis was the financial director of Goodyear Nas um, North America Manufacturing Supply Chain and Purchasing Organizations. In his current role, he's been responsible for leading the Race Tire Manufacturing team through a strategy change, including their lean transformation. Ellis graduated from Hampton University with a degree in accounting, and in 2015, he, um, he received his master's degree in business operational ex excellence from the Fisher School of Business at Ohio State University. So please help me in welcoming Ellis Jones. Good afternoon. That concludes my presentation. <laughs> Come with my own theme music. Uh, hey, but good afternoon, guys. It is, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, and as I said, I spoke in, uh, in the spring uh, at the Shingo Conference in Washington, and they asked me to come here, and, and it is truly a pleasure to be here. Um, you're you're going to see uh, a, a story today on the journey uh, to excellence for my organization, uh, the Race Tire Manufacturing Facility at Goodyear. So I'll take you through, through the story um, and, and hopefully you have some questions. I hope it helps helped you if you're starting a journey, if you're thinking about starting a journey, if you're on a journey and, and, and you're looking for some ideas. Also, I, I love feedback. So after the presentation, during the Q&A or afterwards, uh, I believe feedback is a gift. Um, so please, if you are a, a lean organization, you've been doing it for a while, and you see something that can help me out, please, uh, please give me the feedback. I have to tell you, on my way out here, long flight, I picked up the book on TED Talks and how to give a good TED Talk. And I was reading the book, and I started to panic. Um, I don't do this for a living. Um, and I said, wow, I'm, I'm really messing this thing up. Uh, i got to change everything I do. And then I got to, like, the end of it, and it said, um, follow your instinct. So forget all the 300 pages you just read <laughs> and follow your instinct. So I'm following my instinct. I didn't change a thing. Um, you know, so uh, I, I think, again, it's the story. It's what happened. It's what's happening. Uh, it's not perfect. There's not a, a perfect ending. Uh, we're still on journey, uh, and we're learning every day. Um, so, again, I hope, hope everyone can get something out of this. Uh, it does, you know, I listened to the morning speakers, Randy, um, from uh, – from McKenzie, 
and, and you'll see some of the things that Randy talked about. So you'll see the application of some of the things that Randy talked about. I, I love the, the other presentations with um, the, the library and um, the photography company um, because they talked about um, just do it, and, and you'll see elements of that. It talked about encounters and running the experiment, and you'll see, you'll see elements of that. Just run the experiment, and that's what we did. We ran an experiment. Before I start, I will tell you just a little background, and I'll give you the background of the story, uh, but we were told not to do it. Our company went on a lean journey, a started a lean journey. People think, Goodyear, you must be a lean organization. Race tire manufacturing, when you think of race tires, NASCAR, it's got to be lean. There's no back order for the tire. The race must go on. So it must be the leanest plant in the world. And as my boss likes to say, um, you'll see the ugly baby here. <laughs> you know, you, you, ever, you ever go out with your, your friend or your, you see a baby and you say, oh, that baby's just so cute. And you walk away and say, that was an ugly baby. <laughs> you'll see the ugly baby. I'm going to show it to you. We are very transparent in our organization. We don't hide anything. Visitors come in, we don't hide a thing. And I'll show you some of the things uh, that, we, that we had to encounter. Um, but but um, we were told not to do it. Our company started the journey about five years ago. We were a small organization, um, and they said, look, you guys are too small. Um, we're going to focus on the larger plants, but our CEO made it very clear that we're going to go on this journey as a company one way, and anybody who starts this journey uh, without the consultants coming in and, and us kind of grant you permission, um, that will be trouble. Um, and we started anyway. Um, so... I told my team, I said, well, you know, I'll either have a great story or uh, a great resume after I'm done. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but my team, I always start with my team. Uh, these are my team members. I'm very proud of them. Uh, Sam, shop floor, he just retired. Um, great guy. I, I, I love Sam. He's a, he's, a, he's a good friend but a great worker. Um, Don, uh, press operator. Uh, again, a great person. And then my team, we go to Daytona every year, and we send associates to Daytona is recognition, which is a large part of our system, recognizing our associates. But I, I love this picture because they're standing there uh, with our chairman, um, Rich Kramer, and uh, one of our board members, our new board members. But those are hourly and salary associates uh, that we recognized last year to go to Daytona. And I'm proud of that because uh, when I first went to this plant, Rich Kramer, our CEO, um, he, he was not very excited about coming to our plant. Um, the, the reputation of our plant, very adversarial. Um, it wasn't a very clean plant. The relationship with the union wasn't very good. Uh, and you'll see our performance indicators weren't very good. It just wasn't a pleasant experience. You didn't have a good encounter when you walked into this plant. Um, and, and he visits our plant quite often, and I'll, I'll tell you about that. Uh, but just a little background. Um, I was sitting in my office one day about 6, 6.30 in the evening. My boss walks in and says, Ellis, don't say a word. Um, we have a great opportunity for you. And I was finance director of North American Manufacturing Purchasing Supply Chain at the time. And she said, you know, it was Laura Thompson. She said, Alice, don't say a word. Um, just listen. So your boss walks in the office. is a great opportunity, but you can't respond. Um, and she said, we've been sitting down as a leadership team. We've really been thinking about this race business. And we don't know what we get out of this race business. Um, it's about branding. It's about marketing. It's not about making money off a sale of a tire but we really don't know what we get out of it. When we look at the bottom line, we lose money, um, but, and we don't know why we're in it, so we're really rethinking this strategy. We have consultants in, they've looked at the business, and, and they've laid out this plan, but we need somebody to execute the strategy. Um, and, and we really think you are the guy and the person to execute the strategy. And I started, she said, Alice, don't say anything, just think about it. Um, now, I knew the reputation of this plan, and she knew I would have a lot of questions, and she probably knew I would say no. But she said, just think about it and come back and talk to us tomorrow. And I said, but Laura, she said, Ellis, don't say a word. Just think about it. I said, okay. So, um, so we looked at the business, and they looked at the business, and, and, and we just assumed uh, when we sold race tires or when we, when we uh, serviced this business, we got a pull through through you guys buying race tires. We figured you watch a race. Say, man, look at that great product. I need to buy Goodyear tires. And that was the assumption. We never had data around it. We just assumed it worked. Um, and, the, and the team said, we're not going to assume that anymore. Uh, everything we do will be based off of data. 
Um, and, and now we're going to drive it off the return on investment of, of this business. Um, so I decided, I said, okay, this is a, this sounds like a great challenge. Uh, I had a lot of questions, but I said, you know what? This will be something different. I love challenges. I love doing, something, doing different things. I enjoy people. I said, you know what? I'll sign up for this. Um, I, I'll do it. Um, but I said, I need to do it my way. They gave me the playbook, and I said, I need to do it my way. Um, and so I, I took the assignment. And a lot of my friends said, are you nuts? My finance peer said, what are you doing? I said, this is going to be fun. Um, so I met with the team. And, and, and the consultant said, look, you're going to have to reduce the cost. Um, they had come up with the volume that we would have to take out the plant. We had two facilities. They said, you're going to have to close one, and we're going to reduce the volume by about 25%. Um, so that's what you have to do. And then you can take out all this cost, and you just follow the model, and you'll be good. So I met with the associates. Had an all-associate meeting. These are steel workers, local too. Uh, so a, a, a very an older, established union. And this takeaway, I had a guy sitting in the front row. And, and this is what he said to me. He looked at me, and I knew he would be trouble when I saw him. I've been in enough plants. The guy in the front row all by himself with everybody in the back, I knew that was trouble. <laughs> so he looked at me, and he said, Ellis, don't take this personal. We have no expectation of you whatsoever. None. You're the seventh leader in 10 years. You're an accountant. So you're here to shut this plant down. You don't care about us. You don't even know how to build a tire. We have no expectation of you whatsoever. You're going to be gone in six months. And that's what he told me. So at that meeting, I was telling them that we were going to reduce the volume by 25%. There were going to be layoffs. Um, and, and this is what the team told me. He told me that, and he said, Ellis, there's no trust in this organization. You guys don't recognize us. You don't listen to us. Uh, we don't know if we're winning or losing. Seven leaders in 10 years. Everything changes. We don't know which direction we're going in. There's no strategy. Safety, communication, you guys don't talk to us, don't listen, and safety is the last thing on your mind. You don't care about safety. So that was my introduction to the team. Um, so I, you know, I'm thinking, um, there's social issues in this plant. Um, so we, you know, so we started to go around the plant, and I started to look at this plant. I said, "Holy cow, this is this is not good. Poor housekeeping, um, low engagement. Uh, you can tell from the previous comment. Mindset very negative. Um, you you can't change us. We don't want to change. Morale was low. Adversarial relationships." Uh, no one wanted to engage that plant. No one wanted to go in that plant. Um, here are some of the pictures. Here's an ugly baby. And, and I show pictures of chairs. Now, we had at the time um, 300. <laughs> so it's, this, is, this is my favorite picture. Um, so at the time, we had about 300, um, about 300 employees. Uh, we had uh, 250 on the shop floor. I had 375 chairs on the shop floor. And they all look like that. It, and so on one shift, the most you had was 150 people. So we went around and took a picture of every chair on the shop floor. And this was my favorite because this was the standard work. We had a lot of chairs with chains on them. So the standard work was you came into work. And before you set your machine up, you unchain your chair. And then when you at, get to the end of shift, before you shut down early, so you can chain up your chair. <laughs> because I didn't want my partner in the other department still in my chair. This is a comfortable chair. So that was part of the standard work. So that's, that's the environment that, that we had. Um, and, and, and the team didn't hesitate when you walk. They sat in the chair. You walk by, and they're sitting in the chair. Uh, so that, that's the environment that we had. So those were negative encounters that we, every day, negative encounters. So that's, that's what we saw. That's what the chairman would see. Performance. Uh, we were the worst performing plant in the world. In the world. Uh, safety, we were the worst in the world. It's something, you know, worst in North America, worst in Ohio, but worst in the world uh, on safety. Waste, highest waste in the world. 
our delivery. Remember, NASCAR, no back order, so how can it be inconsistent, Ellis? Well, we spent as much money as we had to to get that tire to the race. Five-day-a-week operation, but we ran on Saturdays. Ran as much overtime as we needed uh, because you couldn't afford small operation, but you miss one race to get your brand's going to take a significant hit. So we spent as much money as we needed to spend to get the tire to the race. Um, the, again, the financial health, high fixed high fix costs, um, deteriorating income. We were losing more money every year. So that was the performance of the plant. When I looked at the cultural piece and to look at the performance indicators, um, not very good. So I'm sitting there saying, where's the opportunity he told me about? I thought this was a great opportunity here. Uh, but you know what? Um, let's talk to a group at lunch. And, and when you look at things, um, you do things for a reason. And not everything's going to be easy. And when I looked at this with my management team, uh, I brought in my finance leader from my other, other position, and we looked at this. We said, this is a great opportunity. Well, we can't get any worse. Uh, we're already there. But we looked at the operation, and we said, you know what? We, we, we can have some fun, and we can change people, um, and we can, we can really have an impact on people. And, and that's how we looked at it. Um, as a team. So we really focused on the culture. You know, I'll talk a lot about the culture. Um, you know, you hear people talk about the tools in lean. Um, you've got to look at the culture. Now, every situation is different, but you have to earn the cultural right to implement tools. If you don't understand the culture um, and, and you, don't, you don't engage that culture and you don't build trust with that culture, don't try to implement the tool. Don't try to do an A3. Um, don't introduce DMAIC. Don't do a value stream map. Understand the culture. Um, and, and believe me, I, I think once you introduce those tools, uh, you'll be much more successful. So we talk about earning a cultural right. And you've got to have the courage. Um, you've you got to have the courage to take it on. Um, so we, we use this framework, case for change, develop a roadmap, build a winning mindset. Um, this team did not have a winning mindset. Uh, how do you achieve the wins? You may have seen this model before, build capability, and just keep going. We're kind of on the second cycle of this, of this roadmap, of this framework. Um, but the culture for us was the foundation. And, and we started with safety, and I'll talk a little bit about that, because again, being the worst in the world, and we figured we weren't going to go any further until we fixed that. If you didn't feel safe, Randy talked about it this morning, if you came to work and you didn't feel safe, how can I expect you to do a good job if I didn't care about your safety and you didn't, you didn't have confidence that you would leave work the same way you came to work? Uh, so that was where we started with our, with our journey. Uh, but we, we, we developed this roadmap and we laid it out. We sat down with the union and said, look, let's, let's really lay out a direction for the team. And let's put together a roadmap that we can sit with the team and we can tell them where we're going to go. We were honest in terms of where we were, um, low morale, bad safety performance, no vision. Um, we were reducing the volume. Uh, we were very, very honest with ourselves. But we say, you know what, we, we know where we want to go. And we're actually, this is the, the first one we developed. We're actually in the second um, version of this roadmap. Uh, we talked about operational excellence. We had no idea what that meant. It just sounded good. Operational excellence, um, you know, process excellence sounded really good. We really didn't know what it meant, but we said we, we, we know we need to get better in terms of our performance. So that was the, the roadmap, but I tell you, direction really matters when you're talking about a team. How do, you, how do you give that team direction? How do you lay out the strategy so they know where you're going, and how do you align the team? And we'll talk about it in our, in our daily management system how we do that. Shifting the mindset. It was a very negative mindset. It was a very, um, I call it um, kind of not comfortable playing to win. I love to play to win. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I'm a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Um, and, and when your team goes in a prevent defense, you know, and you're winning, they go a prevent defense, and they lose. Um, that drives me crazy. I like to play to win. But the team did not play to win. It was blaming people. This was the culture. 
living in the past, lack of transparency. I had people that would walk by me and not say a word to me. Uh, now, I wasn't going to walk by you. I wasn't going to let you get away with that. But people would walk past me and just not say a word to me. No trust. But that was the environment. Um, didn't speak with data. Um, there was the leadership team really controlled everything and really didn't listen to the shop floor. Um, so that was, it was a lot of excuses, a lot of excuses. Uh, and we said, no, we're not, we're not playing that way. And, and we really said, we're going forward. We're going to play to win. It's uncomfortable. Um, change does not happen unless you're uncomfortable. I strongly believe that. You have to be uncomfortable through the process. Um, and we said, we are going to be uncomfortable. I was in a role that was responsible, again, small operation, but if something happens on the weekend with that tire, that, that's a significant hit to a, to a global brand. And I was uncomfortable. I was a finance guy leading that organization. I was very uncomfortable with that. But I accepted that. But we said, look, we're going to focus on process, no excuses. This is the mindset we laid out for the team. We said, you know what, guys, we're going to live on that right side. That's where the magic happens. And the team looked at us and said, ah, you guys are crazy. But we said, that's what we're going to drive in our organization. Um, but the mindset really matters uh, when you're going through this, through, this, um, through this journey. And if you don't have the right mindset, I don't think you, you can ever get there. But it, it truly matters. For the team, we laid out the cultural um, kind of characteristics we wanted to see in the organization, and safety, mutual respect, very important for us. But we said we've got to have a safe environment, and we've got to drive safety. We got to believe it. We've got to have mutual respect in our environment. We've got to hold each other accountable for these behaviors, uh, and that included me. You've got to hold people accountable for behaviors. I'll give you an example. I had, we were actually doing a safety stand down a few weeks ago, and. And I was not happy with the performance of the team. And I got upset with the leader, and I displayed uh, my anger with the leader in front of his entire team. There were probably 30 people there. And I walked away from him. And my, my lean leader came up to me the next day and said, Alice, that was not good. I said, what are you talking about? He said, that, that was not good. That was not the type of behavior we want to drive in our organization. And I tried to rationalize my way through it, and at the end of it, I said, you know what, you're right. And I called that entire team together, and I apologized to that leader because I didn't respect him at the time. And, 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 as, and we said, look, we've got to hold each other accountable. So we really said we're going to live these um, characteristics. Um, and for us, we talk about all encounters matter. Our system is set up to have encounters every single day that will help us improve our business. So when you see our management system, it's all about the encounter that we facilitate every single day, um, the, every hour of the day. Uh, how can we really facilitate encounters to allow us to be good leaders? And, and that's what we talk about in terms of encounters. We, set a, we laid out principles. I think guiding principles really matter in a system. Um, you can, again, you can develop the tools. You can, you can do A3s. You can do DMAIC. You can do value stream maps. Um, but I, I, we really believe in, in principles. It's like raising a family. If you come together with a significant other and you say, how do you want to raise a family? And you, set, you lay out a set of guiding principles. And that's what we, we did. We laid out a set of guiding principles. The safety one, very important. We started with safety. And we said, look, every associate empowered and has a personal responsibility to stop the process to remain safe. And the reason we did that is people would not stop the process. They would work in an out of, uh, they would, they would work in an out of process condition and put themselves in harm's way to produce that tire to get it to the track. And we said, stop. You have to stop. Um, and then we started recognizing people for stopping the process. The first time we recognized an associate for shutting down a piece of equipment, we went out to the piece of equipment. He thought he was going to be disciplined. And we handed him a gift card. And said, thank you. And he looked at us like, you, you guys have to be kidding me. We said, no, thank you. You shut down a piece of equipment. That's the guiding principle. Um, so we, we recognize people for living a guiding principle. In our management system, the behaviors that we lay out in our recognition system is geared towards recognizing people for living our guiding principles. 
Again, it's all about building up the culture before you get into the tools. And, and that's what we, we focused on uh, early in our journey. And this was, it took us probably two years building up this culture and, and changing the mindset in this culture. So you figure, so what, now what? So you, you got a road map, looks pretty, put it on the wall, get cultural characteristics, you know, you lay those things out, you get guiding principles, now what do you do? Um, I had people come in the organization and say, that looks good on the wall, but what do you do now? Um, so what we did is, um, we, you know, you ever heard of this one, eat the frog? If you ever heard of that one, eat that frog? If you wake up in the morning and you eat a frog, you're probably not going to get anything worse during the day. <laughs> so, you know, you talk about if you have a to-do list, just attack the most, the most challenging item. So what do you think I went after? <laughs> There's two there. The, the, now, my team was, you know, everybody said, Ellis, don't do it. The union president said, Ellis, don't do it. They will shut the plant down. My, my HR team, my HR manager, she's panicking. Don't do it. Um, call legal in. This got big. We call it corporate legal in. Corporate said, don't do it. You've already set precedent. You cannot eliminate the chairs. I said, but I have 370 chairs. He said, Alice, you can't do it. You set precedents. I said, okay. I won't take them all out, but I want to take out some chairs. The one on the left, no phone zone. So we got the salary team, the leadership team all bought into this. I said, okay, you guys have a behavior that, that probably isn't respectful. When we sit in meetings, you're on cell phones, you have your computers, and we also were going to eliminate cell phones on the shop floor. So the team said, take them off the shop floor. I said, okay, I'm taking them out of your conference room too. Well, whoa, 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 what do you mean, Ellis? We need our cell phones. I said, no, we're living the example. So we removed cell phones from our conference rooms, computers from our conference room, unless you're taking notes or projecting a presentation, no computers, no cell phones in a conference room. You'd have thought I took the firstborn. <laughs> oh, it was painful. But it was the right thing. We, we were going to live the example. So then we went after the chairs, and everybody panicked. And they said they will shut the plant down. We walked around, like I said, took a picture of every single chair. My union president said, I want nothing to do with this. He sent his vice president with me. We walked to every chair, and we said, why do we need a chair here? Why do we need a chair here? And you couldn't justify a chair anywhere on the shop floor. But we said, you know what? We'll have chairs because the lawyer said you got to have chairs. So we took it from about 375 down to 50. And they were, we removed these chairs. We removed the chains. And we gave them just a standard black chair. Um, it was, it was painful. I had one associate accuse me of, he had a big leather chair. And he said, you're going to put that chair in your office. <laughs> you're taking that chair. I said, you can take that chair home. Uh, if your wife allows you to have that chair in your house, <laughs> take it. He took his chair home. I said, okay. Um, but that was the frog. We said, not, if we tackle that, nothing, nothing can get worse than that. And you know what? We had associates come up to us and say, you know what, Alice? It was about time. It got out of hand. We had chairs all over. He said it got out of hand. Um, so we, we said, look, it's all about respecting your environment and respecting people. Uh, and that was, a, that was a tipping point for us. Uh, but you can't be afraid to eat the frog. When you're going through a journey, you'll always have an excuse not to move on. There's always going to be something. You can come up with an excuse. Um, eat the frog. It, it's, it's not going to be bad. It's not going to be easy, but it's not going to be tough. Um, we started cleaning up the environment, 6S. You heard of 5S. We put safety in the 5S, called it 6S, um, and started cleaning up the environment. That was the, that's the chair that we put in the environment. 
Um, somebody came up, well, this chair's hard. Well, you're in a factory. <laughs> it's not supposed to be comfortable. Um, but no, it was a safe chair. It was a comfortable chair. But that's the standard chair we put in the organization. We put about 50 chairs in the organization. But we did. We started cleaning up our environment, um, really working on the environment because we found that was the foundation for our safety. Um, we really started working on that. Uh, we put in a recognition system. Again, recognizing people for living our guiding principles. Uh, this was the safety. Um, we had safety. You can see the team at Daytona. Uh, we did monthly safety recognition. Um, our shop floor, we had a, an organization uh, made up associates that wanted to recognize people for driving change in the, in, the, in the organization. So they had orange shirts, driving change on them. I had no idea when they were going to recognize someone. They would get together. They would go out to a piece of equipment and recognize an operator for driving change in the organization. Take a picture and post it in the newsletter or on the TV. Um, really started to build momentum. But recognition is very important uh, as you go through the journey. That, so those two were kind of our foundational pieces. We said we need to get those gone before, um, before we move on to the tools, systems, and processes. So safety, um, 5S, cleaning up our environment, and uh, recognition. Very important for our journey in, in building our culture. Um, safety, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, but safety, we went from the worst to the best, or one of the best. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but we did that through, um, through that environment and, and really focusing on um, fixing issues in our organization and being transparent. We did a maturity assessment. Again, always measure yourself. Uh, that's very important as a journey. Understand where you are. You have to be transparent. Uh, this was difficult for the team. Um, we thought we were, some people thought we were good in certain areas, and it says, no, you're not. Um, and we, so we took the assessment and said we have a lot of room for growth there when we took this assessment. Our management system. So this is our daily management system. It's, it's probably, you know, for those who've been in lean for, for a while, it may, may have more elements than you would expect. But we thought these were very important. Strategy deployment, making sure there's clear line of sight in the organization, that roadmap, making sure everybody understands what they need to do and how they impact the organization. Visual workflow. Making sure you can see things and you manage visually. Team huddles, the communication, making sure there's communication every single day. Where there was communication on the shop floor, we had huddles, but we implemented uh, team huddles in every function, every department in our shop floor or in our plant. Uh, very important and helped us drive communication. Tier reviews, these are our accountability reviews for identifying those problems. Every day we have tier reviews. And then problem solving, having a systematic process in place to solve problems. Very important uh, in, a, in a transformation. This is, I know it's busy, but this is strategy deployment. So we use A3s to do strategy deployment. Uh, so this is my A3 with the plant strategy. Um, and on the far right hand, bottom right hand corner, it defines winning for the organization. Uh, so we, we go through the process and we define winning for the organization. And we do this every three months. We update our strategy, and then we deploy it down through the organization. Uh, but that we felt this was a way to use A3 thinking um, in, in the organization to get everybody um, kind of uh, rec everybody to recognize what an A3 is, how to utilize an A3, and get everybody familiar with an A3. Visual workflow, uh, safety. This was a, a very important safety system that we put in place and helped us improve our safety process. Um, again, transparency really matters. Every associate in our plant has um, the, the ability to turn in a safety concern. And we call them target zeros. These were in the computer. Uh, no one knew th the status of them. I would have to go to the safety department. What's the, up, what's the target zero percentage? And we say, you know what, let's make it visual. And we put this board on the wall and, and now we, we go to Gimba once a week and we go to the Target Zero board. And it's transparent. Every associate, so every area manager takes his associates to the board once a week and they see the status of the safety concerns. Very transparent for the organization, helped us out tremendously um, for, uh, for improving our safety. The team meetings, again, transparency, communication matters. 
every day a team, every team has a, a team. This is my finance and CI organization. This is their daily huddle. So at the start of day, everybody starts with a, with a team meeting or a team huddle. Uh, it's structured. Um, there's visual boards. There's two-way communication. Um, so we've defined what they are. We define what it is not. And we define what compliance is for every element of our management system. And everybody understands that. The daily accountability, we have an area in our plant called the Center of Excellence. We have an accountability review, a tier two review every day. It's visual. There's KPIs involved in it. Um, we have the tier review up top, up the top. You see that? It's red, green. And then we have an accountability board. Uh, and we, we lay out the actions of the day that you must take uh, to improve today's performance. Uh, so very important to have that transparency and to have that accountability, uh, accountability board. When we do our accountability, now you would think this would be uh, easy to do. This was one of the hardest things to implement, uh, the accountability board. People thought it was punishment. And then we said, when, we, when you implement it, I want verb and noun. And, and, and if you do an accountability board today, uh, hopefully you're following it. But if you're not, when you state an action, state it in verb, noun, format. The first time we did it, it, it was like a game of chicken. I was trying to get the person to state it in verb, and they just wouldn't do it. And we stood there probably for 10 minutes trying to understand what the person was going to do. And we said, no, simply state it. We have these little cards. Give me verb now. Because people would put up their um, volume in waste. Waste is too high. I said, well, what's that? No, what are you going to do? What action are you going to take? And what are you going to take the action on? And then when's it going to be complete? Um, the, that took a while to get. But, but the team, once we get it, um, man, it, you can go back to things. You can see it. It makes it very clear. Um, so that, that is, that is, that's a tough one, but I, I challenge you to do that. Um, problem solving. Uh, we do problem solving training. Um, this is Ernie and Tracy Richardson uh, driving A3 thinking, but we use A3s, DMAIC, but the tool doesn't matter. Uh, use any tool that you can use to do problem solving, any type of tool. <coughs> um, safety, just real quick. This is our safety A3 for problem solving. As I said, we went from the worst plant in the world to one of the best. Um, we averaged 19 OSHA injuries um, in, in the past. And we're down to we're down to five this year, uh, and and the severity dropped significantly. We took our our safety our workers comp costs from 1.2 million down to about 300,000 a year, um, just a huge. But this process uh, helped us do that. Uh, it really helped us do it. Um, that that was really fun going through. It was a challenge, but it really pointed us in the right direction. Uh, continuous improvement, uh, make people visible. Uh, we did zero continuous improvement projects in the past. No one wanted to be involved. Uh, we have a regional program where you submit continuous improvement projects every month. We've submitted 16, a million and a half dollars in savings, 122 associates involved. We've got many awards, and this is the latest. We just had this one a couple weeks ago, a global best practice uh, for our team. Um, this has been one of the most um, Exciting things for me as a leader, seeing the team go through this and implement continuous improvement. Uh, but everybody's involved in the process. Results. Um, great results. Uh, still working. We still have holes. We still have challenges. Housekeeping. People say, Alice, you're a little hard on the organization. People come to our organization say it's one of the cleanest plants they've been in in Goodyear's network. Um, it's, it's, it's good. We can always improve. Uh, engagement. Strong engagement. Positive mindset in the organization. Questions are different today. People are engaged in the process today. It's not, it's not, we still have negative feelings, uh, but more positive than negative today. Um, the morale, the partnerships, the, the, the partnership with the union today, unbelievable. Uh, my union president is now proud of this organization. He's proud of this plant where before, um, he, he was not very happy about the journey. Uh, his words was, you're putting the lipstick on a pig. That was his word. 
and now today he is proud. He brought all the union presidents in from North America and showed off his plan. That was one of the most exciting days for me when he did that. The results, safety again, very good safety results. We are now starting to set some of the best practices for, for, our, for our global footprint for safety. Uh, waste is improving, our delivery very consistent. We don't work weekends anymore. Overtime's down considerably. Financial acumen, we still have high fixed costs. Uh, but our income statement, we improved earnings by 50%. Um, over, it took us three years to do that. And that was working with our business, and that was a huge, it was the biggest turnaround in terms of percentage in our company. Um, very, very proud of that. Center of Excellence, uh, now next steps. Um, we are actually now getting into our system. So we have our management system. Now we have our, what we call our leverage points, uh, where we are going to implement each one of these systems at, at each uh, piece of equipment in our plant. And we call it the model machine concept. We've just started it three months ago. And we take our leverage points and we start with safety and we implement the system at each, at each piece of equipment within each department, getting the entire team engaged in the process. Uh, we had a video, I didn't put the video in here. Uh, but this is our center of excellence. And we use this to engage our team and train our team. There are nine rooms, movable walls on whiteboards. Um, we just launched this a couple months ago. Um, but it's an open area. I didn't put the before, I should have put the before picture, but this used to be like a graveyard for, whenever we did a success project, they'd just dump it here. <laughs> I said, well, no, you can't do that. So, <laughs> so we cleaned this area up, and it became our center of excellence. And it is a working, working space to train our associates on every leverage point uh, this, right where the sign is, is where we have our daily tier, tier two review. Uh, and we have a review there. You'll see associates come in there, uh, doing success projects, uh, doing safety projects. It's a fun environment uh, for the team, uh, for the team to engage the process. Uh, critical lessons, principles matter, management system matters, very important. Standardized work, I heard Randy talk about that earlier, for really, um, driving the right behaviors you want in your organization. Encounters, all your encounters matter. Very important every single day. How do you facilitate good encounters in your organization? Structure, environment, capability. Making sure you have the right structure, um, the right environment, and the right capability to drive the, the transformation. Um, you need a discomfort strategy. You're not gonna change unless you're uncomfortable. So think about it and have a strategy. Really think about it. And then there's no one way. As I read in the book, um, at the end, follow your instincts when you, when you go through this. Uh, really follow, follow. And then the last thing is, look, if you're going to lead, lead. We're all leaders. Uh, if you're going to lead, lead. Uh, the team needs you to lead the process. They need you to set the example. And once you do that, uh, you'll gain their trust, you'll gain their loyalty, loyalty, and they'll be right there with you. So with that, I think, uh, I think that's the end of time, and I think we're going to open up for questions.